Well, welcome to Guts Church. I need to say hi to Brooklyn and the kids in Indianapolis and Sandy and Scottsdale. And man, I'm excited about being here. I I was very confident about the word tonight until God started ministering to me and speaking to me about Sunday. And uh, and it's going to be hard for it not to just leak out tonight. It's just, let me tell you how amazing God's word is. The world operates by knowledge. The world operates by, by science. The kingdom operates by wisdom, by understanding, by the anointing, and by discernment. And what we have to do, the Bible says that we have to try the spirits. And, and let me just kind of break that down for you a little bit, that you, dis, you discern. See, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, when you pray in an unknown tongue, the Bible says you pray in mysteries. And, and l- listen, those my- mysteries, as you pray, what, what, what God does is it enlightens that knower on the inside of you. That you'll, you'll, you'll talk to somebody and you'll think, man, something about that bugs me. Well, that's your knower that's kicking in. And you begin to, to read the, the, the Spirit of God on, on, on the inside of you to be directed by the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, whatever you're dealing with right now, and I'm I'm telling you, I'm gonna get on track tonight and God's gonna gonna finish this service powerfully, okay? So just buckle up. That it's not too late for you. It's not too late in your, your, your situation. Remember this, that we serve a God. We're committed and submitted to a God. You know, we're not designed to be sovereign people. Did you know that? We're designed for something to lord over us. And Jesus is lord over our lives. And the Bible even says the banner over us is love. And if Jesus isn't lord of your life, then deception's gonna be lord of your life. And you're gonna submit to deception, you're gonna submit to the enemy, or you're gonna submit to Jesus. But we're not designed to be sovereign, okay? And, and, but I need to remind you, that the word is working on the inside of you right now. See, this, this, word, this word of faith that we preach, that I believe is the strongest doctrine on the planet, it, it enables us, listen, to not give an inch. And I'll tell you, the word working in us, now we can make a declaration that I'm on a roll. And we know that in our lives, I'm on a roll. I was, I was talking to Tanya Morgan today, who she and Glenn are the campus hosts now in Skytook and have sold their house in Jinx, their dream house. They sold their dream house. They're, they're moving to Skytook. I mean, it's just like, oh my gosh. But listen, he gave, at, 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 I think it was Sunday night when Gustavo Pius was here, he gave everybody the opportunity. It was a miracle offering. And they gave, a, I guess, a big amount. And but, but she, and she was dogging Glenn because Glenn had an amount and her amount was double what his amount was. It kind of reminds me of Sandy, so I can't really pick fun of Glenn because that's happened to me before. But um, they, they gave that amount. And, and Gustavo walking by them during the offering said, God's going to show them, you're going to have a miracle in 72 hours because you were faithful to give. And they came to pick up an offering envelope. That, I mean, just a little interchange. Three days later, Glenn got a promotion at work. Now listen, his promotion gave him a raise of the amount of money that they gave, but listen, per month, okay? So I'm just telling you, we're on a roll. And I'm, and I'm, and, but listen, you have to declare that. Man, you've got to let the heavens, the earth, and everything under the earth know that you're on a roll and you can't be stopped. See, that's a, man, we're singing the name of Jesus, the name above all names is, is the, that's the truth. And this banner over us is Jesus, God is love. This banner over us is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tzedek, Shalom, man, all the, na- all the covenant names of God now is the banner over us. So I'm telling you, it's not too late. The word's working on the inside of you and we're on a roll. Everybody say, I'm on a roll. No, say it like you mean it. 
I'm on a roll, and, 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 and I'm telling you, there's no stopping this. There really isn't. See, you, you understand that I was reading in Isaiah today, and unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government will be upon his shoulder. Now listen to this. And of it there will be no end. So now our authority just continues to expand on the earth. See, that's what God promises us. I'm excited about Sunday. I'm just telling you. And, and there's, there's an aspect of it that as Isaiah's prophesying and God's speaking, what, what does he say? And it says the truth and justice will be upon him. And we're looking for the world to, for the, for the world to dole out justice. You understand, it's the, it, that justice is deception. Man, I was at a meeting years and years ago, and this guy prophesied that the Justice Department in America would begin to fail the church. And I, would, and I was thinking, oh my gosh. And let me just tell you, I'm not counting on the justice. I'm, I'm counting on our God who is justice. He's a just God. That's where our faith is. That's where our trust is. Turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 16. Rejoice always. No matter what. I'm telling you, no matter what the news is. See, remember that we, it's not too late. It's not over. We serve a God. Here's what the Bible says, and this is what matters. We serve a God who calls those things which be not as though they were. Doesn't stop there and gives life to the dead. See, I'm telling you tonight, and I'm believing God at the end of this service, that there's going to be a quickening by the Holy Spirit in people's lives. This isn't just a midweek service for me. This isn't just all home week. This isn't kind of, here, we're going to get over the hump of the the week today. That's not what this is. This is going to be a supercharged time with God because his word supercharges our life. So rejoice always. Verse 17. Now listen, pray without ceasing. Now think about that. We're continually in prayer. In everything, give thanks. Not for it, but in it. You might say, well, my gosh, man, let me tell you something. If I were a car, a car dealer today and I'm driving by these car lots, let me tell you something. They're empty. I went to the Harley store yesterday and the guy said, man, can you pray for us? He said, man, we need, a, we need an old-fashioned Guts motorcycle rally. I said, well, what's up? He said, man, we got seven new models. That's all we have. Seven motorcycles. And you know what I told him? I said, let me tell you, rejoice right now. And the guy kind of looked at me like I had two heads. I'm saying, listen, you bring me, you start asking me questions, we're going to have church. I'm turning this dealership into a church. He said, man, go, go ahead, get after it. And this guy, this, and, and another salesman came over and said, man, I want to get some of that on me because I was talking about blessings. I'm saying, man, either you're in the blessing or you're in a curse. The world's under a curse. That's why we're bringing the kingdom in. What does the kingdom do? It lifts us. It blesses us. It engages us with heaven. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God for all of us in Christ Jesus. This is the will of God. What's the will of God? The will of God is rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Not for everything. And you know what's, you know what's amazing? I said, I said how, many, how many Harleys do you have in here? He said, seven. I said, how's your year going? He goes, well, really, it's playing out to be the best year we've ever had. I'm like, what do you need prayer for? No, for real. Do you understand? You've got somebody praying for you. Do you understand that? He said, man, my wife, my wife prays for me every day as I leave the house that our business, I'm saying, well, there you have it. See, we've got to understand that. But what does the next verse say? Don't quench the spirit. See, you know that you're, you operating in the flesh, in the flesh it, 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 it dulls you. It grieves the Spirit of God. But listen, you living in doubt, you not praying, you not having a rejoice in your heart, 
Man, you know what that does? It quenches the Spirit. And the Spirit wants to light you up. There wants to be a fire. There's got to be a fire on the inside of you. There's got to be a passion on the inside of you. Man, this is a time right now that we're either passionate or we're not. And, and, but, but listen, our doubt is going to quench the Spirit. It says don't quench the Spirit. What's the next verse say? Don't despise prophecy. See, that's what this Bible is that's sitting on your lap. It's, it's a prophetic word from God. And what does prophecy do? Prophecy encourages you. It edifies you. It builds you up. It comforts you. Man, in the world, let me tell you, the world wants to offer you comfort. But let me tell you something. Man, the world gives and the world takes away. The world's going to offer you comfort, and it's also going to offer you discomfort. It's going to make you uncomfortable. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to send a paraclete. I'm going to send another what? Comforter. Man, Jesus comforted those guys. How did Jesus comfort them? He challenged them. He challenged them not to think the way they normally thought. He challenged them not to, not to live under the curse of the, of the world, the curse of the law. He challenged them with the kingdom. See, then Jesus said, and then, and then Paul writes this, he said, test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Man, man test all things. It's like, wait a second. Am I in fear? If the world is promoting something for you to, for you even to lean into through fear, it's not God. It's never God. If you're anxious about something, it's not God. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. See, we've got to understand that. And then verse 22 in, in 1 Thessalonians 5 says abstain from every form of evil. Man, gossip I'll just tell you, there's, the Bible says if your heart doesn't condemn you, you're right with God. But there's so many things that when I became a Christian, man, I was out on it. Man, Jesus saved my life. I've got a new life. I don't want to bring anything from my old life into this new life. But let me just tell you, you, you live for decades and, and you start, start lowering your standards a little bit. No, it's okay. No, it's not big, that big a deal. And then, you know what? We get like we're 13 years old again. It's like, well, everybody's doing it. Man, I've got so many people that'll come up to me and they'll say, Sheer, you're the only preacher I know that doesn't drink. And I, I said, no, I know a lot that don't. But you know what? A little bit here, a little bit there. Let me just tell you something. I, I'm, I'm telling you, you as a church, you don't want me, you don't want me opening up that door in my life again. I know what's on the other side of that door. I'm not telling you whether if you got them, smoke them. I'm telling you, if your heart doesn't condemn you, but I'm telling you, that's what God saved me from. And you know what? God's faithful. He can save you from it too. But why open the door for it? See, in Luke, Jesus exhorted his disciples to pray lest they fall into temptation. Man, you fellas in here, and, I, and I'm sure it's... The same way with, with girls, but I think like a guy, so point it to the men. I think that it applies to the women too. That, and with women, I'm telling you, man, if you're, if you're tempted to be worrying about anything, what do you do? You pray without ceasing. You rejoice always. Man, you don't, you, you, you give your life to God. What does God need you to do? He just needs you to, have, to rejoice. Man, let me help you. If Jesus is Lord of your life, you're not going to hell. It's pretty amazing. See, prayer lifts us from any power that carries temptation. And understand this, temptation's not sin. It just feels like it to, the, to our flesh. Man, you, I've, I've had guys come up to me regularly and go, man, I, I, I was just tempted. I, I feel so bad I was tempted. Jesus was tempted in like manner as you, yet didn't act on it, knew no sin. Tempta write this down. Temptation's not sin. See, the Word's going to coach us through life. It's going to help us with all this. See, in Psalm 115 and verse 16, it said, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But, everybody say but. The earth he has given to the children of men. You know, in, in, 
In Genesis, God said, look, be fruitful, multiply, take dominion. You know what that word dominion actually truly is translated? Ownership. Take ownership. First of all, to your life, and then to the situations around your life. Take responsibility. Take ownership. See, we have dominion on this earth. Heaven's a whole other di- dimension. Do you guys know that? The, the atmosphere in heaven is elevated. Things aren't in play. And what did, what, did, what, did, what did Jesus say, man? The kingdom is within you. See, God's way of doing things is in you right now. Whether you feel like it or not. Let me tell you, this isn't you going to the crap table and trying to roll sevens. Oh, God, come on. And then you roll, you're like, oh, my gosh, where are you, God? God, it's not the casino of God, it's the casa of God. See, we're not rolling. This is a sure thing. That's why Jesus said, here's how you pray. Our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom's come, your will is done. On earth, help me, as it is in heaven. See, that's how we pray. That's how Jesus said to pray. And he said, look, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom, the keys to God's way of doing things. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Where two or more of you are gathered in my name, I'm going to join you. I'm going to be in the midst of you. And you're looking at you thinking, well, my gosh, and I know people that will say, well, let's pull up a chair for Jesus. That's not what he's talking about. He left his name. He left his power. He left his authority. He left his dominion. He left his triumph. He left his overcoming ability. Somebody should be cheering right now. See, that's what we've got to understand. And you'll, you'll look at it and you'll think, well, why do I need to cheer about it? It's not emotional. Really? The devil taps into your emotions every dad gum day. Every day. I miss my dad. I miss my mama. I miss that 1964 Ford Galaxy 500 that I rolled five times. Somebody said, man, if you love that car so much, why'd you get rid of it? I said, because it's about this tall when I got done with it. (laughs) Psalm 103 verse 19 says, the Lord has established his throne in heaven. And he's established it. And his kingdom rules over all. Take a picture of that on on the screen. His kingdom, it rules over all. His way. Where's the kingdom? It's within you. What's within you rules over all. Are you getting this tonight? Man, what, what, what's in you right now, it's the real ruler. <laughs> See, the earth holds a curse. The earth is cursed. We can't do anything about that. But the kingdom overcomes any curse. Where's the kingdom? What does the kingdom rule over? Where's the kingdom? It's within you. See, in, in, in Mark, the first chapter, the 14th verse, John the Baptist was thrown into, hev- into prison, and Jesus came to Gal- Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, the good news of God's way of doing things, the good news of God's domain that's coming into us now. And Jesus came in and he said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. In the margin of my Bible, I wrote, it's within arm's reach. I could have it in my hand. And then, but what did he say? Repent and believe the good news. Oh, it can't be this good. This is, let me tell you what gospel really means to me, the sheer translation of gospel, it's too good to be true. This is too good to be true. For real? No weapon formed against me will ever prosper? Everything I put my hand to will? (laughs) No, and it uses superlatives. It doesn't say, well, let me tell you something, man. You wear the right clothes and you do your hair the right way. Man, you do something with that mullet. (laughs) It doesn't say that. Taylor's got liberty that everything he puts his hand to prospers, even though he has a mullet. (laughs) Proverbs 4.18, this is going to be a mouthful. You guys ready for a mouthful? Huh? Now, listen, how many of you guys are hungering and thirsting after righteousness right now? Because the Bible says you'll be filled. So you got to come in here hungry. 
You got to come in here thirsty. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You know what it does? It tastes like another. Proverbs 4.18, but the path of the just is like a shining sun. This is what makes this whole thing unfair. Let me tell you the advantage you're about to get just receiving this simple word tonight. Are you receptive tonight? But the path of the just is like a shining sun that shines even brighter and brighter under the, now listen, under the perfect day. The path of the righteous, if I'm following that path of, of righteousness, oh, the gang's coming. If, I, if I'm following that path of righteousness and it's getting brighter and brighter, how many of your lives are getting brighter and brighter? I said, how many of your lives are getting brighter and brighter? My proclamation of faith is my life is getting brighter and brighter. I don't care if all hell's breaking loose. I don't care if, if, if the San Andreas Fault is 100 miles wide. I don't care, I don't care about if old faithful dries up. None of that stuff matters to me. But my path, the path of my life is getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And what's the end game? A perfect day. I said a perfect day. I mean a perfect day. Where, where's this word lead me? To a perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. This is our advantage. Our path is bright. Their path is dark. They don't know what makes them stumble. See, this is amazing. I know what makes me stumble. Traps that the enemy set. Sometimes if my pride or my ego or, or, or my... The Bible says a little slumber, a little sleep, a little folding of hands, and and poverty will come in like a thief. You get lazy. I don't want to get in the Word today. Let me tell you, that's always the devil. And the reason the devil's going to tempt you not to get in the Word is because he's laid a trap for you that if you're not in the Word and you're not on that bright path, you're liable to step into that trap. Verse 20, you guys ready? Can, can we go on a little bit more? My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let, the, don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them, this is key now, keep them in the center of your heart. You can't, you can't be self-centered anymore. You can't be liquor-centered. You can't be drug-centered. You can't be fear-centered. You've got to keep God's word in the center, in the core of your being, in the midst of your heart, for their life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of its spring the issues of life. We aren't designed to be sovereign. We are designed for an overlord. And I'll tell you, there's, I'm going to close here. And it's up to you. But I'll tell you, a preview of this Sunday. I had, I, man, I, I had the whole month of September laid out. And today, I opened my Bible and I thought, what does the Amplified say? Anybody ever do that? Can I, can, I, can I give you some encouragement? Buy an Amplified Bible. I know you could download something, and if you're like a download person, be a download person. I'm a dinosaur. But if you go buy an Amplified Bible that you, that you could underline and take notes, and, and it, it's just a big help for me. I'm just telling you one of the keys to my life. He, Hebrews 11.1 1 in the Amplified says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, okay? Now listen to what it says in the Amplified. Now faith is the assurance, now listen, the title deed of what's hoped for. Man, you think about that. You think about your business people. You get the title deed of something just because you're trusting God for it? and he gives you the title deed for it, guess who owns it? You do, it's yours. 
the things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. Man, if it's in the word and you can speak it toward your life, it's divinely guaranteed health. Wealth. It's not okay for you to be poor. It's not. We serve a God of more than enough. He's given us a new life of more than enough. We at least need to reflect that. And the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by physical senses. And I'll tell you, I'm gonna break that. I, I, I know it's probably a little crass, but I'm just gonna break it over the enemy's head Sunday. I mean, if you know somebody with an addiction, if you know somebody, Taylor made a great point, somebody with a hole in their heart, just get them here Sunday. I'm just telling you. We're gonna, we're gonna get in the word. We're gonna, and we're gonna make it an offensive spiritual move. move. We're gonna go on the offense. Anything you're facing will be overcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.